but I'm not going to spend a lot of time on Joseph's choices and, and the realities of that. What I want to notice is he had a hard choice and was just about to make it, was just about to quietly divorce Mary, right? Which would somehow save his family's honor and, and would leave her to herself, but it isn't execution, which was the other option, right? So he's a, he makes this decision and he's just about to execute it when he goes to sleep that night and, and an angel of the Lord visits him. Now, have we had any other Josephs in scripture who were dreamers? Tech, technicolor green coat guy, right? Joseph, the only other Joseph in the whole of scripture is Joseph the dreamer who got himself in trouble with his brothers, got sold into slavery, but then became famous for being able to interpret dreams of pharaohs and such, right? And made his way up the ladder in Egypt. So anybody in first century Judaism and Christianity who, who was listening to the story immediately goes, oh, this guy's named Joseph too. And you may have done that also, although Joseph for us is most often just a guy who's also in the nativity scene. But here we get Joseph just about to uh, divorce his, his Mary quietly when the angel comes and says important things. First, don't. Then, why not to? Because the child is from the Holy Spirit, not from some uh, paramour or com competitor with you or somebody who has, has violated her. This is, the, this is the Holy Spirit. This is a God-born child who's in her. And so you should stay with her. And also, by the way, this God-born child is going to save his people from their sins. That's a fairly big announcement right? He's going to save his people from his sins. And then the angel goes off stage and the narrator comes in and says, by the way, this is what Isaiah was talking about. This is that Emmanuel character. He's going to shepherd his people and they'll call him Emmanuel. God is with us. God is with us. God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things through whom he also made the world. In that one moment, Emmanuel, we get in a capsule of what became a developed thing later in, in Christian theology, a capsule that this baby is going to somehow be God with us, right? So early on, we get expectations about this Jesus. He's gonna save his people from their sins, whatever that means. Right? We've had 20 centuries of interpretation on it, but whatever that would mean to them. He's going to shepherd his people, Israel, and he's going to be somehow God with us.